because we realize that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, Lord, have your way as we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we just thank God for this opportunity to come before you today. And, and we just have a couple of announcements we want to share with you, and after which we'll have another selection by our Minister of Music, Brother Preston Frazier. I know some of you are wondering, oh, Pastor, when are we coming back into the sanctuary? Uh, the governor say we can come back, and yes, but the governor don't have a final say. Uh, we are still looking at the numbers because we want you to be safe. We don't want to unnecessarily expose any of you because quite frankly, we don't know the extent of how this virus has run through our community. And I would rather err on the side of caution and have you still be here than to be cavalier and jump out there and have you get sick. You know, it's a poor shepherd that will knowingly take sheep around the wolf's den. And I'd like to think that I'm not the good shepherd, but I'd like to think that I'm led by the good shepherd. So let us remain prayerful. We will continue to have this live stream broadcast. And we're opening the doors, but we're limiting the worship presence to 10 or less, and as soon as our numbers plateau, as soon as our numbers plateau and begin to go down, then we will uh, look at which way we'll go from that point. But until then, we will encourage you, if you are in the high-risk area, uh, age, pre-existing conditions, etc., uh, having gone through chemotherapy or any other situation, do not unnecessarily expose yourself. And if you are inclined to come out, wear your mask and bring your gloves. We'll have a little hand sanitizer for you. But we want to make sure that you stay healthy with all reasonable accommodations and expectations. Uh, another word of information, uh, they will be doing testing in Tuskegee on Thursday. No, to solve it on Thursday. Thank you, Ms. Jones. So please, sir, please, ma'am, if you haven't been tested and you're showing symptoms or if you are in the high-risk groups, you might want to call the health department. That number is 727, I believe, 1800. Uh, you give them a call and they'll ask you a series of questions and let you know whether or not you need to be tested. Uh, if you can, be tested so that you will know. Uh, we want you to resume as quickly as you can, as quickly as we safely can. So let us remain prayerful, let us remain patient as God is moving in our midst. I also want to give a shout out to the Bethel family. You all have been faithful and I thank God for you. Uh, you have been responsive uh, to each other and to us. Uh, you've been responsive to leadership, and we appreciate you. Uh, we also want you to know that the building is coming up, it's looking great. They got the walls up, y'all, and one of the roofs is in place. Uh, they'll be working on the other roof and then uh, begin to work on the interior. So we're uh, moving right ahead, and God has been gracious even in the midst of this shutdown. Uh, the contractors have been able to go forth. The blessing is they've never had more than 10 people on the job site at any one time. So they have been in compliance with the governor's uh, stay-at-home order. And we just thank God that he's moved in such a way. Uh, there are some feeding situations that are going on on Thursday. We're expecting a delivery of fresh produce to come to the county, uh, and uh, it will be distributed. If you want further information on that, 
contact your county commissioner or the Macon County Food Pantry and they can give you more details on the distribution of the food. Also, I received a text message that there is a feeding program that will be established for our children uh, between, I believe, the ages of uh, K through 12, uh, 5 through 18, they'll be able to sign up and receive up to 10 meals a week. So uh, more information on that will be available from the Maiden County Board of Education. So please, sir, please, ma'am, let's, let's not uh, miss these opportunities to take care of the most vulnerable in our communities. God is moving forth, and I believe, because he said it, that God will protect us, he will keep us, and he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let's continue to pray for those in leadership, nationally, statewide, and local, that the decisions that they make will go well for God's people in this place. Now, Brother Frazier, would you give us another selection, please? Well, listen here. I got a feeder, but I'm messed up. I started my life over again. Say, Lord, I'm stuck again. I got a feeder, woo, but I'm messed up. I'm starting my life over again. Oh, Bill, of course, let's see it. I got a feeder. I got a feeder, thank you, Lord, but I'm messed up. I'm starting my life. I'm starting my life over again. Thank you, Lord, hey. I got a feeder, thank you, Lord, but I'm messed up. I'm starting my life. Starting my life.
God for our minister of music. Because we're having to make adjustments. And we're making adjustments on the fly. But God knows our hearts. And he knows that we want to be pleasing in his sight. I want to continue with uh, the series that we have uh, started. Uh, dealing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and and we hope that you all have been blessed by this series. It's amazing to me that as I've been studying and researching and finding out that there are a lot of gifts of the Spirit that we just kind of took for granted, that they were operating among us, but we didn't think that they were all that. You know, we... We tend to think if folk can't sing or can't pray or can't preach, then what good are they? And God is showing us that every member in the body of Christ has a very important part to play. Amen. You know, we don't think toes are important until you stub one or until you lose one. Every part of the body has its job to do. And today I want to bring your attention uh, to uh, Romans uh, chapter 12. And I want to tag one verse uh, from that chapter. Romans chapter 12. And we want to tag verse 8. Reading from the New King James translation, you'll find these words. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I want to speak today from a gift that is characterized in the first part of this verse, uh, the NIV says, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. New King James says exhortation. NIV says encouragement. Um, I want to talk briefly today from the topic, the gift of encouraging. The gift of encouraging. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of this difficult time, we see that you are still in charge. That you still have our best interests at heart. That even though we're going through a dark time, yet you continue to let your light shine upon us. Now, Lord, as you have given us this opportunity to stand behind the desk to break the bread of life, I acknowledge I'm not worthy. But all that I am, all that I hope to be, I surrender to you, to be used by you to encourage your people and to glorify your name. Let your word go forth. Let your name be glorified. Let your people be edified. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. The gift of encouragement. Uh, and, and as we look at encouragement, it, 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 it can also be characterized by some other gifts. Uh, the gift of, of uh, as it says in the New King James, uh, the gift of exhortation. Uh, it could also be uh, used as uh, the, the, the gift of comfort. And, and we see this concept being uh, expressed over and over and over again throughout the, the New Testament. Even Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will give you a comforter. Uh, the Greek word paraclete, one who would come alongside you, who would teach you, who would exhort you, 
who would lead you and guide you in all things, who will bring to your remembrance those things that I have taught you to observe. All of these uh, things as, as Jesus had in his life and was also in his Holy Spirit also became a part of us when we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and we were then indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, well that's, that's well and fine, but what about this, this gift of encouragement, this gift of comforting? Well, let, let's, let's first of all consider the definition of the gift. And, 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 and we, want, we want to move expeditiously with this. And, and we have to understand that the key to encouragement is comfort. I cannot encourage you without comforting you. And, and when we look at this, this, this gift excludes all selfish motivation in its use. I, I can't comfort you if I got some ulterior motives. Then at that point, it is not a spiritual gift. I'm using it. I'm just trying to get next to you so that I can get some personal gain out of it. That's not a spiritual gift. That's somebody trying to exploit a situation. But, but a, 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 a believer, when we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit provides us uh, with this, this, this gift. Uh, he provides us with the same ability that He does for us. As the Spirit encourages us and comforts us, He also empowers us to comfort and encourage other people. See, Paul spoke of this gift as enabling believers to have the same ability. And in 1 John 2 and 1, Jesus is described as an advocate. And as we read in Romans 12 and 8, believers are described the same way. Another concept when we look at the gift of encouragement, and, and this is one that, that we kind of overlook, is also that of counseling. Now, we look at counseling and counselors as somebody who tells somebody else what they ought to do. That's not counseling. It, it is not good counsel if I'm telling you how to think or what you ought to do. What a counselor does is encourage you to look at some stuff and come to your own conclusions. What, what the counselor ought to do is hold up the mirror so you can see yourself no matter how pretty or how ugly your situation is, a good counselor helps you to see that and see where you need to make some adjustments. That's, that's what counselors do. And, and Christian counsel is also uh, counseled by others in warning and reproving. If you're doing some stuff you ain't got no business doing, then I would not be worth my salt if I just look at you doing wrong and look the other way. If you're wrong, hard to say, you know, brother God called you better than that. Amen. Not that I'm better than you, because I hope that when I'm wrong that you'll, you'll call me out. Counselors help us to be the best that we could be. And, 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 and Christians uh, uh, may counsel by giving some recommendations, but the whole point of the counseling is to build up or to edify. We want to help each other be strong. So as, as, as I'm encouraging, as I'm using this gift of encouragement, the motivation should be to make you better than you are. If I make you better than you are, then I, I get benefit because you make me better than I am. We help each other become what God would have us to be. As the scripture says, iron sharpens iron. And we both become what God would have us to be. So, so as we look at this gift, this gift is about helping and, 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 and edifying and making other believers better than they are. 
Now, if we look at this gift, well, that's well and fine, but, but, but how can we further illustrate this? Well, let, let, me, let me point out a, a New Testament character that we know a great deal of, who is probably the embodiment, other than Jesus Christ, probably the embodiment of the gift of encouragement. And I'm talking about Barnabas. Barnabas was known as the son of consolation, or some, some commentators put uh, the son of encouragement. That, that was Barnabas' gift. Barnabas could step in and, and help folk be better than they were. Well, how can you do that? Well, look at what he did for Paul. He came in and, and endorsed an unwelcome convert. You all know the story when Paul was on the road to Damascus and Jesus knocked him down, blinded him, and, and, and made him wait until he sent somebody to lay hands on him. Then the guy said, go down and lay hands on Paul. Paul, oh, ain't that the one that was persecuting folk? I don't know about that, Lord. Go down there and lay hands on him and tell him that I've appointed him an apostle. Let him know I got work for him to do. Even after Paul received the laying on of hands and the scales fell from his eyes, his vision was restored. Still, people looked at Paul sideways for a long time. I don't know about that, Paul. It was Barnabas who years later heard about Paul, heard about his conversion, and he went to see for himself to encourage Paul that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, he went and, and, and befriended Paul because an encourager takes somebody that don't nobody else want to be bothered with, and they'll find some good in that individual to meet them where they are and to lift them up to where God will have them to be. Amen. Not only that, he enlisted Paul and encouraged Paul to be a teacher. You know, cross-reference Acts 11, chapter, the 22nd through the 26th verse. And, 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 and there are people who are in our midst who are waiting, who had gifts, knowledge, skills, and abilities, because you all know what I'm talking about. What I would have done, ain't nobody asked me. There are folks in our midst that could bring great things to the body of Christ, but they're not going to jump up and say, hey, I can do this and that. Nobody wants to be rejected. So they'll kind of sit back and wait. And say, well, they don't ask me. I, you know, I'll just sit tight. And in the meantime, the body could have benefited from their knowledge, skills, and abilities, but nobody reached out and said, hey, brother, you can do this and such. Why don't you come over and help us out? I know a brethren who, who got to singing because somebody came along. I, 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 there was a preacher I knew, and, and, and uh, he, he was a member of this church. After he got converted, he played in clubs for years, and there was a deacon at this church. He sat back there in the back, and this deacon came up to him and said, Brother, then you used to play in the clubs? Yeah, yeah, I can play a little bit. He said, man, you see us struggling up here. Come on up and help us out. And he ended up using his gifts to God's glory, but probably never would have if nobody, if that brother had reached out and said, come on up here and help us out. We have people in our midst that are dying to do something if you just ask them. That was Barnabas' gift. He, he saw that Paul had some knowledge, skills, and abilities that nobody else in the body had. Look at the 12 apostles that God had appointed. You had fishermen. You had zealots. You had uh, tax collectors. You had everything but an educator. We're talking about men, as, as we would say today, blue-collar jobs. But then Jesus himself went and put his hands on Paul, who had probably the best education that a Jew could have, had impeccable Jewish credentials. He was a Pharisee. He knew the law forward and backward. He studied under Gamaliel. And God said, hmm, I got work for him to do. Now, notice, God said, you're not going to go to the Jews. I'm sending you to the Gentiles. He had all the tools, he had all the credentials, 
He was uniquely qualified, but it took Barnabas to encourage him to use those gifts. Barnabas was, was, was also one who, who reached out to bring in those who weren't welcomed by other people. He was always reaching out. That's why he was an ideal apostle to go out with Paul to minister to the Gentiles because the Jews figured, them dogs, we don't need to be ministering to them. But he saw beyond where they came from and saw what God could do through them. And then, and, and, and this is the thing, as we see Barnabas encourage Paul, and eventually Paul surpassed Barnabas. And they had a very good relationship. But yet, because what was right or what was wrong, Barnabas was a man of integrity. He reached out to encourage a young uh, preacher. That Paul said, send him on. They don't want to be bothered with him. I'm talking about John Mark. When they were prepared to go out on the second missionary journey, uh, and Barnabas said, we want to take John Mark with us. And Paul said, no, that boy can't go because he started out before. He got scared and went on. So he ain't fit. You know how the old preachers say, your hand's supposed to get stuck to the gospel plow. And he walked away. He ain't got no use for him. And Barnabas said, nah, nah, he's worth saving. I would, and, and it ended up that Paul said he can't go with me and it's, it broke up a, a, a powerful ministry team and they never ministered together again. Barnabas went one way, Paul went the other way and they never ministered together again. But you know what the blessing is? In the later years of his life, when Paul was writing his letter to Timothy, and I'm about to be poured out like a drink offering, and my departure is at hand, he also said in that letter, I thank God John Mark is right here with me. He's been a blessing to me. This same young man that Paul said he ain't worthy, but Barnabas encouraged him, and God used him in a mighty way. For you all that don't know, John Mark was also the one who wrote the gospel according to Mark. That's what encouragers do. Encouragers meet folk where they are and help lift them up to where God wants them to be. Encouragers don't look at what other folks see, but they look at what could be. Encouragers encourage people to be better than they are. Okay, well that's well and fine, preacher. But how do I know if if I got this gift? How how can I recognize this gift? Well, let me give you some general characteristics of this gift. This is a gift of continuous action. This is a gift that is used day by day, week by week, and not one that you just pull out every now and then to do because you know it, it, it's convenient. You know, uh, some folks uh, talk about the gift of tongues, and, and they, uh, they figure if I got the gift of tongues, I'm supposed to use it every week. That's not necessarily necessary. Because there's some guidelines on how that gift is to be used. However, the gift of encouragement is a gift that's continuous. It's a gift that, that, that's always ready to rise to the occasion. It's a gift that when they recognize that somebody need a word, that they're there to give an encouraging word. It's a gift that recognizes that all of us need a little help every now and then. It's a gift that recognizes that in order for us to be what we need to be, that we need a little motivation every now and then. It's a gift that you don't have to be a young person to have. It's a gift that you can manifest sitting in a wheelchair. It's a gift that will remind you that God has been good to you. Amen. And then there's an urgency about this gift. This is not a gift you use when it's convenient. 
this is not a gift that what I would have said something, but you know, the timing wasn't right. No, this gift of encouragement is always time. Because we're not talking about tearing folks down, you know, we ain't talking about uh, beating folk up, but we're talking about making you better than y'all. And see, sometimes you got to strike right when the iron is hot. You can't let the steel get cold and then try to shake it. You know, it's just like raising children. Uh, I remember my mother's uh, favorite scripture, uh, uh, bend the sapling while it's young. I thought it meant you had to go get a switch. Because <laughs> see, my mother was one of them ones, you know, folks say, Mama always waited to get old and new. No, nah, Dorothy Jones, she ain't, she ain't wait. <laughs> if you deserve a beating, she ain't care where you are. She will take your business. One of the worst weapons I got was in, in, in church. I, I was cute, and I laid back and put my foot on this woman, and and pushed my feet all up on my mom said, come on, baby. Took me downstairs, took off that high heel pump, beat my butt, and dad me to cry. <laughs> you better not move, I said there. No, she said, I ain't gonna wait till you get home. Wait till I tell your father, no, we're gonna take care of that right now. And encouragement is like that. I ain't got to wait. I don't, I shouldn't wait to tell you. That, that, that God got a blessing for you. I shouldn't wait to tell you, you know, you look like you're a little down. Uh, uh, I would have said something, but you ain't want to get in your business. No, nah, whatever you're going through, I don't need to know the details. I just need to let you know that God is still in the blessing business. I don't need to know all of the particulars, but I need to let you know that God got you. I don't know all of all that's going on in your life, but this one thing I do know, that God promised never to leave you or forsake you. God promised to be with you always, even to the end of the age. God promised that no matter how sick you are, that if you wash your robe in the blood of the Lamb, you got a home to go to. God promised. We need encouragement in the body of Christ, especially right now. In this season that we're in, we need encouragement. I know folks say, uh, we, we need to be in church. Uh, I, you know, government folk trying to tell us when to go back to church. Now, I can encourage you, oh, we need to go to church because we need to pray. I'm sorry. If the only time you can pray is when you come in Bethel, we in bad shape. Because the Bible say we ought to pray in season, out of season, you know, always in prayer. It was supplication and thanksgiving. We ought not wait, oh, I can only pray in that particular place. Or I, I, I need to have so-and-so pray for me because he can get a prayer through. You know what? If you wash your robe in the blood of the Lamb, you ought to be able to get a prayer through. If you put your trust in Jesus Christ, all you have to say is, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Even if you don't know what words to pray, that's why the Lord gave us the Holy Ghost. Because he'll intercede on our behalf. Lord, I know he's saying all this, but this is what he means to say. This is what he really means. We need to encourage each other. Keep praying. Keep reaching out. Just pick up the phone and tell somebody, God got you. You know, I always say that everybody has at least one gift. And some of us have many gifts. And I would be so bold as to say, this is a gift everybody ought to have. I ought to be able to say something to encourage you. I ought to be able to say something to let you know God loves you. If it's no more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to the cross, was nailed to a cross, and hung there and died for your sins and mine. That while he was dying, said to the thief, you'll be with me this day in paradise. 
that ought to be encouragement right there. To know I got a home ought to be encouragement right there. To know that God loves me even when I'm unlovable. That's encouragement right there. Let us exercise this gift. And let us encourage one another. I, I challenge you. If you know somebody who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I, I want to encourage you to tell them about a man named Christ who came down through 40 and two generations who knew no sin but took on the sins of the world so that we could be reconciled to the Father. Encourage somebody who started out on this journey and, and are not sure what they need to do. Encourage them and remind them that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, then you will spend eternity with him. Let us encourage those who are home and, and they're literally climbing the walls because they want to get out, but it's not safe to do so. Encourage them that God got you. You're not alone. That what we're going through right now is just a drop in the bucket of eternity. <clears throat> and that time will come when we will be back together in one place, worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. In the meantime, we want you to encourage each other and encourage yourself. Reminding yourselves that Jesus is Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. That you have been right there with us. When the world turned their back on us, that you still had us covered. When we were broken hearted and confused, you reminded us that you were still sovereign God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, even though some of our brothers and sisters are going through bereavement, we thank you, Lord. Because we are uncertain about the future, but we know that the future is in your hands. Thank you, Lord, that you got us. And Lord, we will give you all praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for the technology that allows us to reach out. Thank you that you continue to do great works in our midst. Thank you. Lord, we will give you all the praise and all the glory. For you alone are worthy to be praised. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Just what to do, oh Lord. 
my brother. Call on him and he'll answer. My brothers and sisters, let us remain prayerful. Let us keep each other lifted up in prayer. Let us pray for those in authority over us. And then, please be safe. When you go out, wear your gloves, your mask. Don't worry about making a political statement. We want you to be healthy because we want your ministry to be long and prosperous in this place. God has much work for us to do. And he wants us strong and healthy so that we can do the work. Hearts and minds together as one. Father God, we give you glory and honor and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us to encourage one another that we may be the people that you have blessed us and created us to be. Now, Lord, watch over all of those under the sound of my voice right now. And through it all, we will give you all the praise. And let us all sing together. Let the church say amen. Let the church God keep you is our prayer.